This is the work of Andre who was found dead in East Ukraine after a convoy he was traveling in was bombed by Ukrainian forces. This is a solidarity center, and what we're planning is really a, a traveling exhibit that will be in many cities explaining the impact of the U.S. policy attempting to expand NATO, what happened with the overthrow of the elected government in Ukraine, and what it has meant today. And these pictures are really pictures from East Ukraine and Donetsk. Donbass region uh, that show the civilian impact. Andre Stenin, who is a photographer of some of the most powerful photos here, uh, has just been reported dead. He's been missing since August. He was in a convoy that was bombed by uh, Ukrainian uh, forces. This is one of the photographs taken by Andre Stenin. Uh, and this is another one of the photos. I don't think we, we certainly did not realize when we posted, when we made this exhibit, that the news today would be of his death. But we do want to mark his very courageous, very powerful images. This is a, a grandmother saying goodbye to daughter and grandchild, and this says a funeral for a hospital nurse, 41 years old, who died during the shelling of the hospital. So it's these human images that are, are very powerful. I think the photography is beautiful, but there's nothing beautiful about the pictures because it is depicting images of suffering and, and horror. I'm really impressed by um, what I see. And I really think it, in some way, when you look at the pictures, it really literally becomes your backyard. But my family came from Ukraine. Now, it was before all this, it was over 100 years ago, but they came from Odessa and they came from a small village within the Ukraine. And I, I think this reflects that people are fighting back and it's a tribute to the people in the Ukraine are fighting back, similar to what's happening in Gaza. These are not mercenaries from Russia or wherever they may be. They're, they're fighting for their homes, literally. This is a picture that took my heart and broke my heart too. This is for a child in the bus. And there is a brain border checkpoint. That baby is telling the world of conscience why I'm here, why I have to leave my country. Why I have to be a refugee? Look at him. It's an obvious picture for the demolition and the cry. He's telling everyone who gonna support me, who gonna stop the war. What did they do to be in this situation? Do people know that the, the Ukraine is the breadbasket of all of Russia and the Soviet Union? It's also the location of uh, the metallurgy industry, all of those missiles you saw that were uh, touted as being set up for Malaysia, they are, those component parts are built in Ukraine. I mean, they have an enormous high-tech industry. They have coal miners. That's part of the resistance right now, are coal miners who are fighting against the Kiev coup. When I look at these photos, I mean, one that really jumps out at me um, is the picture over here of the girl on the steps at the Odessa Trade Union House after the uh, massacre there last May. Uh, two days ago was the four-month anniversary of that tragedy um, where the anti-fascist movement uh, in the city of Odessa, which is a multinational port city, um, was uh, brutally attacked by um, neo-Nazi gangs, many of which were shipped in from outside the city, um, and their encampment, which was it's kind of similar to what we, you know, I think for people in the U.S., probably the most familiar
concept would be the Occupy Wall Street encampments that were popular around the country a couple of years ago. Um, there was an encampment like that in Odessa against the coup. Um, um, people were chased. They were, uh, the, the encampment was burned down. People were beaten with bats and chains. Um, and then um, those who were lucky enough to escape um, found shelter in the House of Trade Unions. Um, uh, were welcomed by the workers there and given shelter, but it was not to be the respite they hoped for um, because the fascists uh, started throwing Molotov cocktails. They pulled out uh, weapons, uh, firearms, and started uh, shooting people through the windows, throwing uh, firebombs through the windows. And at the end of the day, at least 48 anti-fascists and trade unionists were um, murdered. Many of them actually didn't die in the House of Trade Unions, but um, tried to escape, jumped from the windows, um, and survived the fall, but then were beaten to death on the ground by the Nazis. We know that the murder of Andrei Stenin, I don't know if it will even make the news in this country, the main media news like that of other, many other journalists who have died in Ukraine, who have been murdered, or beaten, or kidnapped by the, by, the, uh, by the Ukrainian fascists. I believe there's a woman reporter for Pravda who's still missing. The news has been subsumed. We've not heard about the two journalists who died in Syria and Iraq, American U.S. journalists, and their deaths are also the consequence of U.S. actions. But, uh, they're being used as a pretext for intervention. And in Ukraine, the United States is openly un and unabashedly supporting and funding those who murdered Andrei Stenin, uh, who, who kidnapped journalists uh, like Graham Phillips from Russia Today, who uh, responsible for the death of journalists from Italy and other countries. See artillery shells raining down on cities and villages in eastern Ukraine, on Donetsk, Lugansk, on hospitals, on schools, on, on uh, residential complexes. We see armies of people forced from their homes, forced to flee into exile. And the men behind the guns, the men firing the artillery, are the direct political descendants of those in Ukraine who in World War II allied with Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich. But this time, the United States is openly on their side. Due to the heroic resistance of the people of, 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 of Donetsk and Lugansk, of Nova Russia, they have stopped, they have stopped cold the forces, the, the bloodthirsty forces uh, of the coup regime in Kiev. And there's talk of a ceasefire. Wonderful thing, a ceasefire, no more killing. At a certain meeting going on in Wales right now, they don't think it's so wonderful. They are disappointed that Poroshenko is giving in, is, uh, is, 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 is entertaining the idea of a ceasefire, because the, the uh, rulers of this country, the political and economic establishment in this country, want war because war is the only thing that keeps the United States and its vast military apparatus relevant in the world today. Fear, being afraid, that's only good if it gets you into motion. Let's take the fear that can be aroused by the uh, belligerent statements of the imperialists and say, let us mobilize us and let us take action to fight against it. Let there be no mistake that it is Washington. Washington provided, by their own admission, at least $5 billion to help uh, organized the Maidan movement that led to the coup. Um, it's been uh, the main force behind getting the IMF deal signed. They've been twisting arms with the EU to make them uh, sanction Russia and to uh, provide more money to keep this war going. Um, so it's really incumbent on us, the anti-war movement here, just as it is incumbent upon us because of the, the role the US plays in funding Israeli apartheid and the war in Palestine, um, that we um, take this issue up in a serious way and, and build 
consciousness and resistance throughout the movement. 